Hey Vikings fans, Tyler here to talk to you about pick and shovelware and pickandshovelware.com. T-shirts, sweatshirts, all kinds of fun, different Minnesota sports clothing items and apparel options. We got a deal going with them right now where if you buy whatever you want, enter the promo code bleeding purple, all one word, and you will get free shipping. That is promo code bleeding purple. Pick and shovelware.com. Make sure you go ahead and check it out. Okay, let's start the show. Welcome into Bleeding Purple, a podcast about the Minnesota Vikings. My name is Tyler Hay. I am joined, as always, by Mr. Adam Patrick. Hello, good sir. How are you? Doing good. Three games in a row. Three games in a row. Vikings win. Three wins. Three wins. Three wins. Three games in a row. Yeah, there are <laughs> several games in a row. I mean, but yeah. Yes, three important, well, whatever. Three wins. All wins are important. Three important wins. Three wins, wins. in a row is, in the NFL is pretty good no matter what. Exactly right. And especially when you mix in road games. Yeah, two on the road. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's good. That's good. So the Vikings beat the Jets. Let's discuss. Do you remember what the final score was of that game, by the way? <laughs> I believe it was 37-17. 37-17. Okay. So were the Vikings in control of this game consistently? Did you feel like that? I felt like, I mean, I was kind of in and out of the game doing other obligation stuff, but it felt like the Vikings were pretty much in control. I mean, offensively, there were issues on both ends, obviously, or for both sides, but the Vikings were pretty much in charge. They score early, and, you know, they looked pretty good there. Would you agree? Yeah. Um, after the first drive, I wouldn't say they looked that great in the first half. Yeah. I think uh, they had, like, around like 50 yards on their first drive and then for the rest of the first half they think they had 50 yards Mm -hmm. so um i think that was a mixture of just play calling and the environment with the wind or whatever yeah the Um, wind was definitely a factor factor. a couple times yesterday the the announcers mentioned that a couple times um and then the second half like i feel like kind of like last week where they just came out um the second half, you know, firing and 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 you know putting the game away, and they were able to do that. They got a couple turnovers, um, and you know just won a game that they should have. So. Definitely, I completely agree with that. Won a game that they should have, and it was important that because of the Buffalo game. Now I'm consistently worried that they're not going to win these games that they just should win. So it was nice yeah. to see them perform the way they did. Um, what were some of your – let's do some likes and dislikes uh, from this game. What were some things that you really liked that the Vikings did in this football game? Um, they protected Kirk Cousins pretty well. I yes. think he, he was sacked once, and that was on him. I think that was that one where he almost got a safety, which yes, was, was. You know, pretty awesome. Um, he hung onto the and, ball for <laughs> so long on that play. I was yelling yeah. the whole time. And then – and then the run game looked good again. Um, I don't know. I don't think they had over 100 yards rushing, but it was pretty close. It was like 85 or 90 something yards. Yep. But you know, he had two rushing touchdowns from Latavius Murray. Um, Adam Thielen looked great again. You know, he always looks good. What can you um, say about Adam season. Thielen? Guy's amazing. I mean, apparently, he's, some people he's he's not better than Devontae Adams this year. So, um, but that's a Whole another argument. That's a separate conversation. Uh, a whole another podcast. <laughs> uh, the defense looked good. Uh, they had a bunch of reserves on the field, and looked like their depth is 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 pretty good. They can fill in when needed. I don't know how how long that can go on, but they they did well yesterday. You know, you had Holden Hill with an interception. You had you know, Jalen Smith or Jalen Holmes with a, yes. a sack and 
Jaron Curse had a sack. Um, so you know the defense and the defense looked good yesterday with with all those guys in there too. That to me was the story of the game. Was the depth for the Vikings, especially in the secondary, was tested and they looked pretty good. Not that the Jets are incredible, but yeah, it helped that they had a, they were playing against a rookie quarterback too. Yes, but, but I was um, very impressed. I thought Holton Hill played his butt off. I thought Curse played pretty well. Iloka, Iloka did good again. Yes, did again. Anthony Harris was in there again. He made some good plays. Totally. I was just Holton Hill was all over the place. I I really thought he uh, he played well um, when he was in there. Yeah, concerning part, like what are what do we make of these injuries? Like Bar, I mean, we haven't heard anything about how long these guys are going to be out, but like Rhodes with an ankle, Bar with a hamstring that scared the crap out of me and looked a lot like an ACL right away when it happened. It doesn't appear like any of them are extremely serious, um, or at least think, Zimmer yeah. wants us to believe that. Yeah, right. Mike Zimmer didn't provide anyone any really updates on. Their injuries today was Xavier Rhodes, Anthony Barr, and uh, anyone else get hurt? Yesterday? Compton. Compton guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Tom Compton. I'm not really worried about him. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, you have Dalvin Cook and Riley Reese, and then Everson Griffin's not injured, but, you know, when when he, he'll come back, if he does come back. Um, but I think it comes down to really uh, for this week against the Saints, like, how important do the Vikings feel this game is against the Saints? They have two important games coming up against the Saints and then the Lions. Those are two pretty important games, especially when you get down to like playoff seeding, divisional yes. stuff. Yes. So I would be surprised if Dalvin Cook is not playing on Thursday, not Thursday, on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday night, which is good for these guys with injuries too. They have a whole like pretty much a, a whole day, extra day to, to heal up. Um, same thing with Anthony Barr, uh, Xavier Rhodes. It looked bad at first, you know, not being able to put weight on it, yep. getting off the field. But apparently, he was standing up on the on the sidelines and stuff. And and then they heard. Come, I heard at come? one point today they said that that if 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 it was a like if it was a playoff game, both Closer. of them would have gone into the game. Yeah, yeah, which is like crazy to me because it looks so ugly on both of them. Like Barr, yeah. I was like concerned, but what did but yeah? What did Compton hurt? Compton hurt his knee. Um, he oh, did not. That's good. He, yeah, totally. He did not return to the game. Um, but they had Isadora was the yeah. dude that came and in he didn't, and played. And I didn't. I wasn't like, oh man, Isadora is doing horrible in there. Mm-hmm. They still ran the ball. They ran the ball really well. You know, and I think that people should, people need to revamp, that should be the expectation. Oh, I didn't hear about Isadora screwing everything up. That's all we need from this offensive line is to just not hear about them. So like Brian, to, Brian yeah. O'Neill again, didn't yes, hear about him. Yes, and that is like, we don't need anything besides that. I'll tell you what, the run game though, with Pat Elfline back, Ooh. way better. Dude, I'm going to start calling Tay Train. That's what I call him now. So, Tay Train, dude. Oh, that's what, that's what you call him? That's it's, we're close. I mean, we're... That's, it's, not what, that's not what everyone has called him since he's been okay. you know, in high school. Listen, we're, I'm super close with him, and after performances like the last few games, I'm going to go well, ahead know, and start calling him Tay Train. According to the, the Fox broadcast, he had his you know homecoming game yesterday in New Jersey when he's from uh, Syracuse, New York. So. Well, those are very different places. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk a little bit about how bad the broadcast was. Yeah, it was the pretty, Fox broadcast. Spielman's brother. I know, and I feel bad because I he. I didn't think he was. He no, was he's the, not the worst, but he, the combination of he and whomever is doing. Is Tom Brenneman, I think. Yes, I am not. Who didn't? Who sounded like he didn't prepare at all for mm-hmm. the game? The whole sure thing did, was but... like, yeah, I'm sure he did, but it was like just, I loved. I loved when they were talking about Adam Thielen. He's getting close to the record, and then Zilstra caught a, a, a long pass, and and Brenman was like, "Oh, there's the record," and he was like, "Oh, wait, no, that's 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 Thielen." That's Just the, kidding. That's, that's the other white guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh come on, dude! You got notes on the field for real. I'm like, yeah, like they have big numbers on their backs. You should be able to tell. I mean, they're kind of a talk, long ways away. Talk but. About the win, like every other play. And just, although in defense of that, it did look like the wind was like in it issue. was a factor, but I think and I think like some people were trying to put it off like it wasn't a factor, but it was. It's only totally in, in the kicking game. Bailey looked like he had a field goal until about like 
10 feet in front of the, the goalpost. <laughs> there was a kick that the Jets kicker had that, like, got pushed two different yeah. ways. It still went in, but yeah. it, like, obviously got moved because of the wind twice in two different directions and still went. And I was like, I... I was watching the like condensed version earlier today, and I thought to myself as I watched it, like, how did they make any kicks that yeah. whole afternoon? It was unbelievable. Darnold had a couple of overthrows that were so obviously affected by the wind. And the under, um, there's a couple underthrows by Cousins too, where you, where I think people were like, "Oh, Cousins underthrew it," and I'm like, uh, I think that had to do a little bit with the wind. Yes, and I think it was. So, yeah, is it hard to get a real great idea of, like, how the Vikings' offense looked? I mean, a little bit maybe from a passing perspective, but they still still scored 37 points. Yeah, scored a bunch of points and threw the ball pretty darn well from, like, a statistics, you know, yardage perspective. Ran the ball really well. It's kind of, I don't know, but it was a kind of a surprising 37 points because you're just like, you just look up at the screen and you're like, oh, they have 37 points because, like, Kirk Cousins didn't have an amazing game no but he didn't, just, but he didn't have to either you know the Vikings had a bunch of three and outs on offense they had some you know some I think Filippo maybe you know took a step back in this game after you know two straight pretty good play calling games he had a couple like you know there was like a third and three in the in the first half and they called like a, a deep deep pass to Diggs did that a couple times where like it was a short third down and they called a deep pass and I'm just like you have so many options and and you call like a go route and then you know they had uh, i think it was a goal line situation on like the jets three yard line they called three straight pass Passes, plays and yes. went a field goal when you're finally so, were starting to run the ball okay yeah so like, it's it's stuff like that where like you know you could tell that he's still he hasn't been an offensive coordinator for that long and yeah. i think he's i think he's probably getting used to the fact that the vikings are being able to run the better ball the ball better now yeah so. I would agree with that. Um, real quick, I would like to call for the abolishment of any like lateral passes yeah. as like mm-hmm. bubble screen options because we can't handle them. We just can't handle them. Kirk bubble Cousins screen. can't. It yeah, just don't do it. Just not like behind the line. Yes, kind of behind CFL the line. CFL looking play. Yes, to the running back and Kirk Cousins. It's always blown up. It never works. Kirk Cousins tries to throw it at the guy's feet and it's a bleep and fumble because he's throwing it backwards. Zimmer's got to put his. Uh, yes, his please stop calling play. those plays. Come on, those they're dudes. they're not working, and I understand why you like them because they look really cool. And I bet you've seen them work before other places. Stop doing it; it doesn't work here. Not with Kirk. Not with I, who? Yeah. It wasn't Rock Thomas, was it? Who was had that one? It was oh. Diggs. Diggs. Was, oh well, yes, you're totally right. Diggs. The one was Diggs. Yeah. But that, I think I, I don't know. I think that was one Kirk Cousins this time because he threw it into the ground i know he was trying to throw it away honestly i think both, yeah i think both of them are on Kirk cousins because if you're the the big yeah. qb the like qb1 like franchise dude you know that although you're throwing that ball away that's a fumble you have to be better than that but still like take that option away from dude and well, at least he hasn't had any fumble place. problems this year so. yeah exactly it's not a big deal it's not like we're and i think one factor on of that. the vikings offense kind of struggling yesterday people don't really give credit to the Jets defense. I mean, they haven't been amazing uh this year, but but, what? but Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles is good he's a good coordinator and and the Jets have some playmakers on defense. They have Jamal Adams and, and Leonard Williams. I but, mean what a crazy idea that is to that assume the that, yeah, that, well that the de- yeah, that the defense could play well at home and maybe have a hand in some of the struggles for the Vikings offense. That's and that that their backup, what, Daryl Roberts or whatever, <laughs> he's shut down uh, Diggs pretty well. Damn yeah, they, they're pretty Diggs good on defense, like, I thought. Diggs had like what, like Nine catches for fourteen yards. Yeah, he did not. Because <laughs> well, and plus he was getting like all these like kind of screen drag route, like one or two yard routes. Yes, and, like, he's fast, so maybe uh, you know, he's, and he's a good route runner. And, and the can get like open. yes, and the best opportunity he had for anything downfield was maybe the best play that the Jets made on defense all day, where oh, where he, that he guy got back in coverage and, and broke it up. That was. Uh, that was really impressive. I mean, he had no to be perfect. With throwing Thielen like post routes and you know outs and stuff like that, but, mm-hmm. but not Diggs. I'll figure, I'll figure it out. And here's a fear of mine after watching this game and maybe the last couple of games 
is if if D Filippo tries to make digs into like a gadget like Percy Harvin yeah, type on us. Oh, I will just I don't think so. I will just lose it. Well, he's too good. You can't you have to be able to see that in practice and like get away from that, but Yeah, I think he's well, I think a lot of that came from, you know, the running game not being able to do so well, so he yes. makes some of those plays in and now And then the yesterday game. too, they maybe run more of them because those passes are easier to make when it's windy as hell, you know, as opposed yeah. to like the 15 yard down the field which could be affected just enough for it to, you know, be yeah. a disaster. So there are many different factors. And uh thank you. That's a great point for uh you know, a lot of times and I'm definitely guilty of this is we only are paying attention to what the Vikings are doing and not giving credit to the other, you know, 11 professional football players on the other side of the ball you know that uh sometimes they can affect the play too that's a great point dude <laughs> Todd, Todd Bowles and Mike Zimmer actually they coach together in Dallas so they're pretty familiar with each other and how they, mm-hmm. they run things I don't know offensive wise but and I think that this is one of those games that or we should be specific the first half of this game is why they're implementing all the rules that they're implementing because people are so bored and so uninterested in a defensive struggle where like it's punt 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 like i didn't hate it but no yeah from a highlight perspective from a fantasy perspective from a you know people don't want to watch them speaking of punters got that guy you don't like he had a pretty good day yeah dude i was hoping you wouldn't i'm not sure if the wind helped him too but well you know it's part of being a punter it's part of being a punter and part of being a kicker boot out of the end zone for what like 60 some odd yards he was it's hard for me to say it out loud but he was great yesterday and yep. i was like i totally you know how i feel about punters adam you know how <laughs> how closely i don't I know watch. i don't know how well quickly could have done yesterday because you probably would have kicked some 30 yard punts in, in that win okay ryan, <laughs> ryan quigley would have had an 85 yard punt that would have been on sports center with that kind of wind because he is smart Knows how to utilize it. Also, close circuit to Quigley. If you're listening, if you're a fan of the show, just reach out, send an email, we'll get in touch, we'll do an interview. Nothing. What about Kai Forbin? No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I heard, uh, well, not I heard, I read something on like the Vikings Reddit page yesterday. That someone was like watching the game with, with Kai Forbath actually in like LA. Shut up. Forbath told him that like he warned, after he got cut, that he warned like, the other Vikings players at Carlson was like a head case and like he was gonna he's gonna screw up and these kicks. combust or whatever mm-hmm. so, that's good the Vikings pretty much just kept him because they drafted him that 100% and we, I, we, we said it yeah. we said it the whole time man that guy was gifted that job and he never should have even been drafted oh god almighty um, let's talk a little bit Let's talk a little bit more about Adam Thielen and how impressive uh, this like streak is. So correct me if I'm wrong, but he is one game away from tying the actual record record, not just the to start the season record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Calvin Johnson has uh, eight straight. The record's eight straight games. Cal- Calvin Johnson had that. I don't know what season it was. But he had eight straight games. God, I was just listening to the radio, the like Vikings overtime, and they were talking and throwing some of the stats out from that stretch of games from Calvin Johnson. And yeah, he had a couple wow. two hundred yard, uh, yeah. two hundred yard games. Yeah, but he, I think that was the year where like he broke the yardage record, but he had like two or three touchdowns. Yeah, yes, and that was yeah. Adam Thielen has more touchdowns than Megatron did that year, yeah. and the Lions that. I think that whole season won four games, four or five games all year, even though he had eight games of 100 yards or more. It's bonkers. I think Thielen has 822 yards right now receiving, and I think he needs like 178 to get to 1,000 already. It's That's not bonkers. Even, That's so crazy. It's not, it's not even week eight, and uh, if he does, he'll become the first Vikings receiver to have back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons since – 2003 with Randy Moss when he had six straight. When Adam Thielen was like watching Randy Moss. Yeah. And then and Chris Carter has the Vikings record for thousand yard seasons in a row with eight. Sheesh. Yeah. Which is like wow. Third all time, I think Jerry Rice. I was, like was going to say straight. that has to be like pretty high up on the like NFL yeah, list because good God, that's a ton. Yeah. 
man it's yeah, like you, you it's go through good. yeah you go through time and you don't you kind of stop watching guys like that or a player like randy moss comes along and you kind of lose your appreciation for man that chris carter those are some mm-hmm. stats man he was uh, yeah but i don't even think percy, i don't think percy arvin ever went over a thousand because i don't think he lasted an entire season really. no i don't think so yeah too many migraines um, what else was I going to say about Adam Thielen? I'm losing it, but very good. oh yeah, he's very good. And do you think that he is the best wide receiver in the NFL right now? Because I know I'm starting to see. Can we talk some, about this. Last uh, week? I mean, I yeah, it. yes, but do I? Is it? Do I have more evidence now to support support my case? Yeah, he's right now. He is. Mm-hmm. I mean, Michael Thomas is playing pretty good too for the Saints. Um, but he really is the Saints only receiving option. We'll get more of that when we look at the the Saints later. Mm-hmm. Um, while Thielen has, you know, digs uh, to compete for targets, Rudolph, uh, even Treadwell. Cousins has been throwing to Treadwell a bunch too. He has, yeah. Treadwell and played okay yesterday. People have like been I feel like people have been trying to like have been giving backhanded compliments to Thielen for what he's been doing because oh he plays in the slot or or Diggs is getting all the attention. That argument and bothers me. I'm just like, yeah, but he's still getting open and he's still catching everything. There is no way that after this many 100-yard receiving games in a row that defenses yeah. are paying more attention to Diggs yeah. than they are Thielen. Then maybe well, that was like, a, a let him have 100 yards like, yeah. 100, yeah. Maybe that was true in the first few games, in the first like two or three games that Diggs was getting more attention. There is no way the Saints are game planning for taking away Diggs, and then we'll figure Thielen out. That's not the order that they're doing things. There's no way that is. No, I think I think the Saints accurate. are going to try and shut down Thielen this week, but their secondary is uh, not that great. Not that great. And then we got Diggs, and then we got Rudolph, and then we got Tay Train running stuff because now Tay Train Cook. is yeah, it may be da- Tay Train, bro. Tay Train, get on the Tay Train. <laughs> <laughs> and Dalvin Cook can be the backup, and the when backup. He, and when he proves that he can stay healthy, oh, then he's... maybe he can get some. Yeah, that health brought... issues, just like Diggs, just like Diggs. Really Can't happen. stay healthy. <laughs> Can't stay healthy. Not worth the money. No. Nope. Can't stay healthy. I saw. Oh, some somebody, <laughs> some girl tweeted that. Probably blocks me or or whatever, but I saw on my feed somehow that like, um, that Dalvin <laughs> Cook's guy, yeah. Uh-huh. He hasn't been been playing in the last two games. Probably can just get rid of him. Okay. Yeah, that might be. Nope. No. That's it's gonna be a no. It's gonna that's gonna be enough for me. You probably shouldn't do that. That might be a Dalvin. little early. Uh, maybe Dalvin. To cut Dalvin. Dalvin. Maybe Dalvin Cook, but they gotta keep that Dalvin Cooks guy. Yeah, so. Cooks has to stay. Cook. Nah. See you later. Can't stay healthy. Get him out of town. We spend that money better elsewhere. Just like, just like spend that Jake money on the Jake. offensive line. That's my f- new favorite argument, by the way, yeah, uh, to watch on Vikings yeah, Twitter yeah. is, yeah, well, like spend the money on the offensive line. As though there are just like offensive linemen, Pro Bowl offensive linemen growing on like uh, meadow yeah. sides. And yeah, every, just everyone's so and... great at checking their quarterback that they just like to give every, all their offensive cool. linemen away. It's no problem. We can just have those because if we got the money, we'll just – it's like a store. You just go to the store and you get a new offensive line. Which the Vikings don't have the money. No. And there definitely isn't a uh, offensive lineman store. Because if there were, it's, yeah, well, we'd have gone already. Big and tall. <laughs> well, what is it like? XL, <laughs> well, yeah. Men's yeah. Men's yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it called? XL, XL, Men's DXL XL. or something like that? Yeah. For Shaq Chops? Yeah. For a hat? Shit. Yeah. yeah. They also have Icy Hot. And uh, what else does he endorse? Gold Bond. Yeah, and Gold Bond. Yes, that's the Shack store. Yeah, and then they, you know, they have the Brett Favre stuff too. They have the, <laughs> the copper, the copper, the copper, copper fit. Yes. and the super razor. And, and if you go on the right day, you could just see Jerry Rice walking around confused, like not sure if he's supposed to be there or not. Oh yeah, yeah. and then you have Joe, Joe Montana walks in with his Skechers. Yes, rolls in on his like goofy shaped Skechers, so they yeah. can shape your. Shape your buttocks. Do they still have those shoes where you walk on them? I think them they do, but buttons? they've been proven that they're uh, a hoax or a false. But they don't. They don't. They don't actually. You know, help you lose weight. It's weird. It's like it's like you have to actually like work out or change well, your diet. I mean, define shape. shape your butt. You know, because if yeah. you're wearing the shoes and the, some shape change takes place, 
Not false yeah, advertising. Yeah, well, the shape they're looking for, you need uh, surgery for that. <laughs> or implants, but yeah. because evidently that's a thing. Mm-hmm. I saw a headline recently. Nah, let's not do that. I don't want to talk about butt In the New York Post, one of those headlines? <laughs> butt implants gone pretty, wrong. New York Post had some interesting headlines recently. Let's talk a little bit about Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, Olive Garden. do you think... I like Olive Garden. Th- me too. <laughs> do you think Olive Garden is as bad as the reputation that it's gotten? I don't know what the reputation is. Should it being good? You get free and breadstick and free affordable. Salad. Yeah. I think like you get unlimited refills. I'm missing the missing the bad part. About this. Yeah, where is the? Now you can some days the days there's what never ending pasta. Yeah, never ending pasta. Always never ending breadsticks. A smile to... from your server. You get to act like you can pronounce Italian words, which is like my a... favorite well, thing to do. Well, my wife can because she's Italian. Oh really? Oh. No. But uh, I'm so jealous. So well, she actually, just yeah, so she kinda, makes amazing give, Italian give, food. Yeah, we kind of get it at Olive Garden like. Every night, like at home, garlic bread. Get out of here with that! It's just like a normal. That's like, oh, you want to have that? Oh, sure, okay. I am jealous. We are sauce. We are more of a uh, bite squad kind of family. Do you even have bite squad? Do you know what that is? Is that a thing? Mm. Bite Squad? Is that, so, a, is that a cartoon? I'm like, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, food uber that's a bad description so you just uh it's an app uber eats? what yeah uber kind of eats? yeah basically yeah thank you or that's like what I meant. Di- dash diner dash or whatever yeah well. that's the clo- door dash or whatever it's okay. close to that where you there you get a bunch yeah. of restaurants you say i want this 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 and this they bring it to you charge you Post a little base. extra and yeah like, um yeah. so that's the kind of uh food that we make around my house i've done that i've done that a couple of times but i've been like why did i just pay like Thirteen dollars for a four meal, four dollar meal at Wendy's. <laughs> Be thirteen dollars. You didn't have to it do is, anything. It's a mile down the road. I can just drove there. <laughs> well, you didn't have to do anything. Thirteen dollars, yeah. dude. That's how I spend my money. Thirteen yep. bucks. So I don't have to get up. It's worth it. Totally worth it. Hundred yeah. percent. What'd you get from Wendy's? I really like Wendy's. Junior bacon just, chi. Yeah, I do that. I do the four for four. Okay. Okay. I mean. Okay. I one day I got just fries and it was like three dollars and I'm like, or I could just get four things for four dollars. <laughs> Wendy's is an underrated. I feel like it's underrated. I Very like much it better so. Than McDonald's. Very much so. I think their chicken like yeah, the chicken's good. Oh, fries are good. so bomb. Burgers are underrated. Yeah, burgers I mean, are but, underrated yeah. because you can actually tell that they're kind of real burgers. Yeah. They're you not just need, like... like a burger. Just like a cheap burger. Yeah. Is good oh, great stuff. I completely if agree. You want, if you want fancy, you can go to Five Guys or Shake Shack or we have In-N-Out out here. Yeah. How is that, by the way? I've never been. Is it worth In-N-Out? it? Is it worth the hype? Yeah. It's is good. It, it's it's good, good to go there. It's, it's not like... I mean, it's not... A, I don't think it's as amazing as some people think, but I like Shake Shack better, actually. Riddle me this. Is it true that there's like a secret menu with like yeah, secret code words? Ah! Do you know the code <laughs> words? Can you tell me the code words? Yeah. All right. You can look them up. On, you can Google them. We'll talk yeah. about it off air. All over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's super cool. If I started a restaurant, we would have a secret menu with code words. Uh, I'm not sure what the restaurant would be called, but that's what we would have. It would be a secret menu. So, oh, we were, so we were, we were talking about the uh, cousins bashing. Yes. Classless, 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 classless cousins. Classless cousins. And why Jets fans should like let him hear it for for deciding the, where he wanted better, to work the better option for, for him. deciding where what yeah what was more comfortable for him for using, as a work for using the Jets as leverage to get less money which by the way is like the leverage thing from other teams. <laughs> All players yeah, do it, or obviously. not? Well, we shouldn't say all players because not all players are able to do it. But players that can do it always do it. It's what not crazy Reds, that Kirk what Cousins. Do you think the Redskins were trying to do every year they franchise tag. Yes, trying to get leverage. They're waiting for that one year where he doesn't do so well, and they're like, "Well, you can sign for this, or you can just leave." Yeah, and to sign for less money—that I think is where the. Like, I just, it's so crazy to me, <laughs> like, because you're talking about a much better football team. 
like a chance to win a Super Bowl this year. I mean, maybe the chance is getting slimmer as the season is progressing, but a chance nonetheless. You don't have that chance. Yeah, you don't have that in New York. Better receivers, a a better defense. Yeah. And you... Better coach. I would say better coach. Yeah, and there are Olive Gardens all over the place here. Play indoors at least nine times a year. Yeah, and you see the wind in the stadium. Why would you want to play there? But yeah, he's I mean, a jerk for choosing. Look, Cousins has looked good outdoors this year so far, but I mean, any quarterback would rather play indoors. Play. Everybody'd rather play indoors. That's why we they have indoors because it's better than outside. Place that snows and you can play inside, or a place that snows and you have to play outside. Easy hmm, choice for me. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't from, know. He's, he's from Michigan. He can handle it, but. Mm-hmm. They actually they talked about that a little bit on the broadcast, and I thought that was interesting. Where they're like, "Yeah, because Darnold's a Southern California, and he's probably never played in bad weather." It's like, like you think that he's never yeah, been up, cold. Uh, was, like, has he never yeah. been cold before? So was Aaron Rodgers in, in Green Bay? That's what. Yeah, it's like I just don't. I feel like so, so much is made of that. Yeah, well, and that's that's another great one is oh, Peyton Manning can't win can't win in the cold. It's like he was playing New England in New England every time that <laughs> happened. That was why he lost was because they were going to win the Super Bowl. The, you know, like those were incredible football teams. Like, but yeah, uh, cold weather just gets to him. No, it doesn't. Everybody's cold. There's not like uh, it drives me crazy. If anyone wants to read a, a good response to the the New York media or whatever, I'd go on the the Viking Age, read the. Latest from Realistic Randy. Oh, he, uh, he responded to he it. Wrote, oh, yeah, he wrote, he wrote man. An, an apology to, uh, I think he titled it, yeah, an apology, an apology to the New York Jets on behalf of Minnesota. Yes. Like, Sorry for causing you so much hurt by signing Kirk Cousins. And letting you draft a franchise quarterback. Yeah. So sorry. You know, I will say this about the um, the Cousins thing, or being butthurt over Cousins not being a New York Jet. Because if you're a Jets fan and you look at that and you would have gotten Kirk Cousins, then you're drafting Saquon Barkley, and all of a sudden that offense looks pretty okay. And then maybe... Eh, I don't know. You could have said that about the Giants, too. Yeah. I mean, you could say about a bunch of teams, thought, you know. They but. thought Eli Manning was going to be amazing but i don't i I saw a tweet today too that said well not a tweet i think it was a comment on our an article where they said well if case keenan was still in minnesota they still would have beat the jets if kirk cousins was there and i was like yeah what (laughs) nah i don't know about that (laughs) i don't know maybe probably but i don't think it would have been because of case keenan no i don't think so either i you know i don't like doing the i told you so thing and i never really like I didn't dislike Case Keenum, but holy cow, am I glad he's playing for a different football team and we have Kirk Cousins. Well, it's weird that it's a I movie head to feel, make. You know, people who cover football for a living were agreeing that Kirk Cousins was the better option over Case Keenum, and you know, it's weird that you know me that and other people, people might actually know what we're talking about. Yeah, the people who watch every week and are following it every week. Yeah, we're not. And, yeah. We're not. You know, we're not. The people on ESPN just saying stuff to get rating or whatever. Yeah. We, uh, I don't really care if I get clicks or not. It's just, yeah, it's it makes more sense to have cousins here. I think a, I think they made yeah. the uh, correct decision. Honestly, I would have picked Teddy over Case Keenum. Yeah, me too, I think. Well, eh, no, I can't say that. I love Teddy Bridgewater, but I would not have picked him. If it was just between those two, like, say, Cousins would have gone to New York. Oh, that's fun. Cousins goes to the Jets. Who do you have as your quarterback? Teddy. Teddy, for sure. Zimmer would have picked Teddy, no doubt. Final he answer. Loves, he loves Teddy. And he, he does. He did not yeah. love Case Keenum. No, he sure didn't. And I don't know if Case Keenum would have wanted to come back because I don't know how much money the Vikings would have offered him, and he would have been able to get more elsewhere that's a great point they might have yeah had cousins said no to us we might have wound up without anybody well we probably would have gotten teddy because i bet we would have paid him more than and bradford would have been like hey what about me yeah, can i hang him, please <laughs> i'll take i'll take 30 million if you have to have if you have a laying around <laughs> you guys got like 20 million i could have real quick <laughs> Oh man, I got a statue. Did you know that they yeah. made a statue? Yeah, I was number one pick. That was the number one of the pick. year. I'm the reason they have a rookie pay wage scale. Scale. Yeah, that's why. Is because of Rams want to move to Los Angeles without me. <laughs> oh, 
blaming Sam Bradford for the move to LA is amazing. <laughs> your mediocrity, your coach's mediocrity, is what caused your franchise to move because nobody cared about your stupid games. That's a hot take there. Yeah. Hey, the Chargers <laughs> might come in San Diego. I saw that. Did you see? So they are selling these seat licensing the PSL. licenses. PSLs. Thank you. PSLs. I was trying to, I didn't want to screw that acronym up. I was going to say something wrong. The PSLs. They were, had a goal set of $400 million, and they are going to have to reassess. I mean, like the 150. 150, $150 million. It's yeah. insanity. What do you think? Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because the Rams are that much better? Do you think it's because the Chargers are playing in where the, it's like Carson or Just, whatever? It's like uh, in like a soccer stadium where nobody people, cares. People in LA and, and San Diego just don't really get along. Yeah. It's not really, so it's very different, like culture wise. Like San Diego is more chill and relaxed, and LA is more like upbeat, kind of more East Coast. Like, get out of my way. Yeah. I want to be famous. I'm. Get and also, way. LA is not really known for supporting their sports teams that much, besides maybe the Lakers and, mm-hmm. and the Dodgers. So, and that's just because they've been good. I having, think that's it's yeah, like, so is having, it a hot so, ticket? That's the only question. Yeah, and, so, having two NFL teams, I don't think that was the right decision for the NFL. I know the Chargers wanted to get that money or whatever, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm not so sure it was the greatest decision, but. I wouldn't be surprised if they came back to San Diego. I heard like maybe they'll go to St. Louis, but I'm like, do they have to? They'd have to change their name and stuff. They yeah, did that. Yeah. But, but yeah. their stadium, their stadium's going up for bid this year, so they wouldn't be able to play in their old stadium in San Diego if they came back. Yeah. Was that that was the issue basically to begin with, right? Was they wanted a new stadium, but there was mm-hmm. not a. Um, they didn't want to pay for it. Yes, they wanted the <laughs> city to pay for it, but no billionaires to didn't want to pay for it. Yes, I mean, well, let's not get into that because here in Minnesota, the Wilfs, it's what, kind the Wilfs, of a, the Wilfs, Wilfs put in what, like six hundred seven? They did, but if you ask anybody who doesn't care about football, the the public paid way too much for it. Listen, I can't argue public- with that because I don't. I'm so biased that I don't like. I'm excited that it's there. I wanted them to build it. I'm happy to pay those taxes. So it's hard for and me as, to put myself in the place of somebody who doesn't care about it. As the public, it's it brings your city more money. Like, mm-hmm. You have to realize that it's not just about the football team. Like you guys. In Minnesota, you've had so much, so many more events there, like what the X Games and yep. the Final Four this year for yep. basketball, and which possibly, they <laughs> possibly, oh yeah, they had to cover up the windows. Yes, yeah. they had to make yeah. a big curtain, and it cost like a yep. <sighs> whatever. So great! No, they it's, might, just, uh, it's amazing. They might, they might have WrestleMania there in the future. Oh I, God, I'd be so. That. I'd be so. Have, they might have to move it to probably May if they do that because just to make sure it doesn't snow. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would be cool for WrestleMania. No, when is WrestleMania? That's in. It's usually in the beginning of April. April, beginning April, middle April. Usually it is. Yeah. Okay. You might need to wait because yeah, it's snow. that's when the the heavy stuff falls too. So, uh, but whatever. Yeah, WrestleMania. Snow. That'd be super cool. I'm into that. Um, <laughs> back to football. Do you think that I want to talk more about the Rams versus the Chargers and why those two teams, although they're playing in different places a little bit, but they both say Los Angeles. Why is one doing so well and like thriving and one? Because the Rams, like the Rams had they already had a fan base there. They were they played in Los Angeles for yes. a very long time. That's what I was going to say. And the people who are in LA don't want to go to Charger games because they have been hating the Chargers yeah. because they've been and playing then, them for yeah, no, and the Chargers had previously. Not. Are not. I think there's like a one. There's only one like highway or one road to get to that stadium. Mm. So traffic is already a bitch in in Los Angeles. And so, even worse it, when you're trying yeah, to get out. And to... NFL tickets are not the cheapest in the world. Um, no, they're not. And just people who used to root for the Chargers, you know, who might have traveled from San Diego to Los Angeles, don't really want to just because they feel. You know, abandoned. Well, yeah, and it was like because they basically walked out with the middle finger in the air. You know, it's like they were fine. We'll go to L.A. in San Diego for like sixty, almost sixty years. Sheesh, man, that's crazy. I didn't realize it was that long. I mean, it makes sense, but wow, Mm -hmm. how far away is it from San Diego? How long a drive from San Diego to 
where the Chargers this, play. Distance wise, it could be like two hours, but with traffic, probably like three hours. Okay. This is it's not that far, so it's not like because there's there's some NFL teams where their stadiums are like an hour away from the the city that they claim, like yes, the Forty Nine ers. I was just gonna say that isn't Santa Clara a long ways away from yeah? Even Foxborough, that's not very close to Boston. I think that's like forty five minutes away. The New York Jets and Giants play in New, New Jersey. Jersey. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. I mean, like yeah. At least the Vikings play in Minneapolis. They sure do. Right downtown too. God yeah. dang it. Right where the Metrodome was. No curses there, no problem. So that's good. <laughs> good play. <Load> up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. They did load up. It's on the footprint, but we'll, whatever. Um, let's talk a little bit about, so with the injuries for the Vikings on defense, specifically in the defensive secondary, Patrick Peterson is looking to be traded. Do you think that is a possible move that the Vikings could make? Slash, do you think Arizona is even anywhere close to trading him? Um, I think Arizona is probably listening to offers because apparently he wants to be traded. Yes. And you don't really want a player, you know, in your locker room who doesn't want to be there. In the middle of the season. Um, especially yeah. of his caliber when you could, sh- who's still like probably in the prime of his career, you could chip off and get some, some good, you know, uh, compensation for him. Mm-hmm. Cause they could probably get at least a first round pick to the Raiders just got a first round pick for Amari Cooper today. <laughs> I was just, God, I almost forgot. I'm so glad you brought that up. We'll talk about it in a second after we talk about the Patrick Peterson thing. But so do you Vi- think as far as the Vikings go, they, they would be interested in him, but it's pretty much impossible for them to acquire him. I think they have like a lease amount of cap room in the NFL, with like 1.2 something million left in cap space. They would have to, and his cap hit is around 11 million this year. It's like 12 million next year and 13 yeah. million next year. So if they were to acquire him, they'd have to probably send like Anthony Barr, which, eh, but he's hurt now. So, um, not interested. Threw that, threw that out the window. Um, really? I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't that. do that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I feel like Barr is playing pretty well. I feel like we are. Doing the backup quarterback if, thing with if you got uh, Patrick Peterson and a third round pick for Anthony Barr, Patrick Peterson and a well, third no, round wait. pick. No, you and send you, you, Barr you have and to a, send a second. Round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, I don't know. You have a secondary with Xavier Rhodes and Patrick Peterson, and Peterson could be your punt returner. Yeah, that's true. And then from a run-stopping standpoint, you got a pretty good Hughes, defensive line. Hughes comes back next year. You know, you just convinced me. I think I'm interested. I think I would do it. But I it's, think I would do really, it it's really impossible. No, from a money standpoint, it can't happen. And also, I kind of brought it up to squash it because the head coach, I believe it was the head coach today, yeah, was said, like, that's off the table. At yeah, but happen. he's not going to be like, yeah, we're looking to trade him. 100%. That's, <laughs> you just are taking all gonna, my – you're taking all my – never going to say that. No, you can't say, yeah, well, I mean, if somebody gives us whatever, like <laughs> if the offer is good enough, we'll let anybody go. You it's can't like, say you know, that in the season. Percy exactly. Harvin wasn't going to get traded. Yes. A bunch of other players. That Randy Moss things. wasn't going to go anywhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It always happens, yeah. Um, it's, let's, a good, it's a good thought to have. But, yeah, the yeah. Vikings already have an all-pro corner. Trey Wayne's is looking pretty good this year. Yeah, and they even the and even the guys who came in, like the Holden Hills and the Alokas and all and these the guys Alexander. are – Yes, all these guys are Get playing. Better. Curse is playing well. It's It looks like it's it's good. It looks like they have the, a decent amount of depth. The risk-reward is not enough. The reward is not enough to make the risk. Definitely. Whether, move like that and we haven't even talked about like locker room chemistry whatever whatever because that uh, yeah. would be well i think he's i think peterson's a, a good guy he's never been known to like cause trouble and stuff like that I yeah like. but getting rid of a bar could be i mean they've spent a lot of time with bar they probably like bar kendrick's is really good buddies yeah. with him i mean that That's is something to acknowledge you football guys you're always saying business it's never about feelings it's never about loyalty yeah. it's just billion dollar business right. <laughs> only facts he's interested in it's but it's dying so he's at least the nba <laughs> be king soon yeah <laughs> hey man lebron james is gonna do a new space jam movie the sky's the limit for that guy yeah maybe it'll get like general. four million views a game yeah <laughs> Let's talk about the Saints. Vikings play the Saints. 
Sunday night uh, football at home. They, yeah, they can win. They can totally win. Do you anticipate a high scoring affair? I suppose it depends on who's going to be playing, like injury wise. But let's assume that Rhodes is going to play. Let's assume Barr is going to play. I feel like it could be Joseph. The score, is, the score could be like the Rams Vikings game where it almost gets to you know forty points or whatever. Mm-hmm. I probably probably something similar to what the Saints just had, where it was uh, with the Ravens. I think they won like 25, 24 or something like that. Yeah, how about dude missing the first extra point? <laughs> also, real quick, we just as like see, a NFL see, roundup. Anyone. Mess up. It happens to everybody. Yeah. This was the weekend the best, to watch football because kicker, he missed an extra point. That's the first extra point he's ever missed. The thing about like yeah, two hundred and twenty some. Yeah, he's, he's missed. He's missed some kicks this year, but every time he goes up to make a kick for the Vikings, I'm just like, oh, he's probably gonna make it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have no, I'm not, I'm not nervous at all. I'm like, and if he misses, I'm like, eh. I don't know if I would go not nervous at all. But I'm definitely way less at, nervous well, yeah, like, with if Dan it's at Bailey. the end of the game. Yeah, I'm gonna be, yeah, you know, more nervous. If it means it. anything, I'm always nervous about it because I'm a Vikings. But fan. if he's going in there for like a 45 yard field goal, I'm like, this is probably good. Yeah, 100. percent And that was I was shocked because was he short on the 42 whatever one he missed? Oh, it was that one that that curved. That like it looked like it was going in and like ten yards to go. Oh and yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the whoop. wind just kicked it the one way. Yeah, Look, yes, you're Chris totally Berman, right. Whoop. Yeah, what? <laughs> back, 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 back. The, uh, yeah, I, it was amazing that they made any kicks in that. But, yes, it was so fun to watch the rest of the NFL uh, feel the uh, wrath of the kicking mistakes. Because I feel like, yeah, I mean, I know other people dealt with it, but, God, it was fun to watch everybody lose games on field goals yesterday. Cowboys, what, they must have kicked them to tie it? Yep. There's a couple other, yeah. Um, Ravens. There's another. Oh, Ravens, and then the Browns got beat in overtime on oh, a yeah. super long kick. That was like a 59 yarder or something, which also is bonkers to me. Like, who are these guys kicking like almost 60 yard field goals? Where do they getting like, back? Getting back to the Saints, they only have <laughs> one loss. <laughs> I they only have one loss. Sorry to cut off your kicking. Uh, I was going to say, I need to start a special teams podcast because I kick, just don't get kicking. enough time punters, to spend kickers, on the punters, punters, kickers, and long snappers. Yeah, I'm just cutting you off. I don't want our ratings to go down. <laughs> totally understandable. Thank you. Continue. Oh, no, but uh, this, the Saints, they only have one loss this year. But I was looking at you know their, their games, and they haven't really won their games really in dominating fashion like you look at a team like the rams or the chiefs who are undefeated mm-hmm. who've just kind of been blowing teams away yeah the saints have they they just barely beat the ravens I was gonna say, yesterday. They gifted a win yep it was on, yeah it was on the road um they beat the browns by three points mm-hmm. they had they had to go to overtime to beat the falcons um and then there was like one other i think it was last week no last week was that weird game against the redskins where like Drew Brees had his record, and I feel like the Redskins just oh, like... Oh, yeah, up. we're over it after that. Yeah, that was a very strange football game. And then they lost to the Bucks. That was week one's kind of weird game, but... Yeah, that was that's weird. You know... But they're, they're, they, have, they have flaws. Like, like their pass defense, I think, is, give, is giving up, like, the third most yards per, per catch in the league. Mm-hmm. Um, and they've given up 13 passing touchdowns, so... Their pass defense not that great. Uh, their rushing offense has kind of not been there this year. Yeah. Alvin Kamara is not averaging as many yards as he was this year. And, Still touching you know, the ball and moving the ball effectively, but it's not like yeah. running, rushing the ball. I think they're 16th in the NFL well. in rushing, so yeah. they're not amazing. And, and the Vikings have been good against the run this year, so I don't see them having a problem stopping that. And then going against their pass defense, they have. You know, Thielen and Diggs. And then you even look at who the Saints have on offense. Yeah, they have Kamara and, and Michael Thomas. But uh, after, after that, that, their second leading receiver was Ted Ginn, and he's on IR. And, is, uh, and it's Ted Ginn. Like, come on. I think there's a, a rookie receiver they have named Traquan Smith. He has like eight catches this year. He's mm-hmm. like their second leading wide receiver this year. So... You know, if they can if Rhodes can play and shut down Michael Thomas and you know, just need to try and focus on shutting down Kamara and making making sure he doesn't, you know, burn your defense for a bunch of yards, I I don't see the Vikings having I, it's gonna be a tough game, but I don't see them 
going into the game being blown out, especially at home or anything like that. Yeah. Well, and you with Breeze is scary because he's really, really good. But there's always flaws he around. He hasn't thrown a pick yet this year, which is amazing. But he will eventually, you know. Yeah. And like this, this this might be the game that he does. Yeah, and it, it it is incredible though the how the difference between the sexy pick in the NFC, the Saints, and the floundering Dallas Cowboys is like three plays. One of them oh. was a missed field goal. One of them, you know, it's like the margin of error is so thin. So I don't think there is a ton of difference between even, even look at the Eagles. They've lost yeah, a bunch of yes, games. that's another great example. Another great example of a good team that's lost a bunch of close games and looks like it's falling apart. You know, but I mean, but yeah. those are those are the good teams. You win, you win close games. It's true. And in the NFL, there's enough parity where that is the difference between playoff teams and non-playoff teams. But I feel like Breeze is getting a lot. It's like he is getting the lifetime achievement yeah. award credit stuff now, and people are more afraid of him now than they were last year. But he's the same guy, you know. And and yes, he was good. But did you think they could win that game last year? Because I think New Orleans maybe was better last year than they yeah. are this year. Yeah, I think I think they were better last year, especially down the stretch. Yeah. Um, I don't think Drew Brees has done that well against Mike Zimmer's defense, especially the last two games yes. in in um, U.S. Bank Stadium. He did play well the second half of the one game, but I mean, he's Drew Brees. He's going to play well. You know, he's yeah, got more touch, people, more yardage than anyone. And like, people like to bring up that second half, but the Vikings turned the ball over on their own side of the field. I think two of the Saints' scoring drives were like under thirty yards. Yeah, and he wasn't so like Drew Brees was good, but he was not exceptional in that game. No, in that playoff game, and he will be good again on Sunday, but he probably isn't going to destroy you. You know, but there seems to be this huge fear. And like uh, consensus among national media members that he's just gonna like light this team up, especially if the injuries are happening yeah. for the Vikings. And I mean, that's a, a real fear for you know. I mean, yeah, Drew, Drew Brees, Brees, but he, he's gonna complete passes. We, yes, we know that. One hundred percent. Thank you. Know, you. The Vikings have to make sure they just they don't miss tackles. They don't, you know, don't turn the ball people, over. Don't get yeah, into don't a short do, field. Don't let people. Yeah, don't let people behind you. You know, don't get. They're gonna have probably like more inexperience on the field in the secondary. Mm -hmm. You know, don't get confused out there. I think actually, I heard yesterday it might have been during the game that the Vikings have since the Rams game or whatever. Mike Zimmer went back and like simplified the defense so that things are more back to how they used to. I, they're probably trying to mix some some new stuff in. Yes, he said he said that wasn't working. Over coaching was what he said that yeah. week in between and they've been better ever since then. So whatever he fixed or changed or stopped doing was I think he nailed it cuz they've been looking pretty darn good since then. And especially yesterday even with the young bucks out there they still look pretty good. Well, Drew Brees I've got What do you I've got? got? The last two games from Drew Brees. The uh, playoff game Completed 62% of his passes for 294 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, and then the game, the opening game, what, two years ago against Bradford? Or no, that was last year. Um, again, that one, Sam Bradford's only game. Oh, yeah, that was last year. And Adrian Peterson playing mm -hmm. for Sam, him. He completed just like 70% of his passes for 291 and just one touchdown and no interceptions. So yeah, that's incredible. Guy throws for 291 yards and a touchdown. I'm like, I have I have no recollection of how he played that game. Because <laughs> it's just Drew Brees and the Saints, you know. So I just assume he's going to get. And, I mean, that would be a win for the Vikings from the Drew Brees standpoint. If you could hold him to one touchdown and 290-some yards, oh, they'd yeah, probably I win think, the football game, right? I think, yeah, you just got to – you're, he's gonna get yards. He's gonna get. He's gonna complete passes. He's probably not gonna take a whole lot of sacks. So there's no point in like probably trying to throw a bunch of different blitzes at him because he's he's probably not just. He's not gonna. He's too smart to get fooled like these rookie quarterbacks and not know where the blitz is coming from. Yeah, you're not gonna outsmart Drew Brees probably. And he gets rid of the ball super fast out of the pocket. So just making sure that the playmakers. If they, they're going to catch the ball, just make sure they don't get yards after the catch and stop the run. If you stop the run, that that makes your defense so much more difficult. And the, the best thing about the Saints, Andrew Brees, he's not going to run RPOs. No, he's not. <laughs> so, so, so we got that going for us. Yeah. 
Uh, how important of a game do you think this is as far as the like whole big picture of the season is concerned? I mean, obviously there are seeding impact, you know, impacts to be had with the NFC, whatever, whatever. But how big of a game do you think this is for the Vikings? I think if it was earlier in the year, I don't think it would probably matter as much. But I think, you know, we're getting to the middle of the season. It's a pretty, pretty important game considering, you know, the Saints and Vikings are – one of the the six teams right now if they went to the playoffs they'd be in the playoffs i think the saints would be the two seed and the vikings are the four seed i believe Mm -hmm. um so yeah for tie breaking scenarios head to head or whatever not that i don't think the saints and vikings would tie with their records because the vikings have an actual tie an actual tie a real tie um but yeah this this stuff matters like head to head and, and point differential and all that fun stuff when you get down to the the end of the season and nfc records and stuff like that for tiebreakers with with other teams yes um especially with like the packers and something if, if they end up having the same record you're going to need to look at other stuff to figure out who wins the division or something like that yes i was going to say it looks like like the the rams are pretty clear that yeah. they're going to be the number one seed or at this point anyways it seems that way and it looks like everybody else is kind of in the middle so it feels like maybe like you said like earlier in the year this, maybe yeah. not as important but now that we're kind of seeing that there's a definite middle group that's going to be separated by not very many games i think it's super important for the Vikings yeah and i don't even know game. if the saints are gonna finish you know, winning their division. Yeah. Panthers have been playing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Which makes me so mad because that was like my only hot take all year was that they, <laughs> they were going to be garbage. They, they still have time to combust. But it's true. Darius Wright, he had a pretty couple good plays yesterday. I haven't heard McAleel's name a lot. Has he even playing? I, I think he's hurt. I think he's out. I don't Probably think he's been playing. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen any. Uh... But I did. I did enjoy after the Panthers game yesterday. Their their Twitter account tweeted out the the picture of it was like Cam Newton celebrating, and then a bunch of their players behind him had like uh, the underdog masks on, like the like the Eagles did. The Eagles mask. Yeah, I was like, ah, uh, that's that's amazing. Did you also see the Eagles are now doing the like? Well, the pressure's off now, and we. Uh, like, it's like, give me a break, you guys. The pressure. You are you want a Super Bowl. Stop. Like, it's yeah, everyone, you. Everyone's giving you their best. That's exactly it. You're the Super Bowl champions, dude. There is no sneaking up on anybody like, this year. There well, is no we're underrated they, this year. Yeah, like, it just isn't a thing. Now that, now they're going to be like, well, that was last year. We don't like talk about Totally. This is a totally new team. Totally new team. And nobody believes in us. It's like, get out of here, you guys, with that garbage. I can't have it. Predictions, Adam. For the Saints game, uh, I don't want to be a homer, but I do think the Vikings can win. They what? They haven't lost in U.S. Bank Stadium to the Saints yet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> miracle, miracle or not? I was going to say, I'll take a miracle. It happens. It happens all it's the time. Fo- it's football. It's always happen. That's right. The Bears almost got one yesterday against the Patriots, and they were stopped on the one yard line <laughs> on Hail Mary. What a bummer! And man, Trubisky, meh. <laughs> <laughs> franchise QB. man oh man what um, i'm gonna go make it a nail biter we'll go 28 27 vikings 28 27 gonna be a gonna be a last two minute two minute drive last you know, second last second win maybe oh maybe even a field goal why you gotta do it really <laughs> <laughs> why? Why would you do say, that? I didn't say a twenty-seven yard. Play. Well, come on. We all thought it, anyways. Uh, I don't know. I want to. I don't have a lot of confidence in the Vikings. Did we? I feel like we picked this game as a win, though, when, before the before the season started. I think so. Because it was right. at home. I just don't know. I think it's going to be really close, or I think the Saints are going to just beat the poop out of the Vikings. I don't know. I I feel like. Under Mike Zimmer, especially recently, the Vikings have come up big in in game like big matchups, like minus the NFC Championship, um, like primetime games, especially at home. Yeah, they do play well in those. And I was so impressed with the the depth on the secondary because yeah. that's my big concern. Was I don't know if they can handle Drew Brees, and he's definitely going to tear him apart for a little bit, or you know, for portions of the game. 
Oh, I think I'm going to pick against... Oh, no. I know. I feel bad. I'm going to go 27-28. Do you have the scores from last week? Saints. Um... I I love that. I thought you write everything down and you <laughs> then I never have it. <laughs> uh, man, this one's chaos. I don't even that one has a hashtag on it. So oh, is that beating Rams off? game there. So that would mean twenty three twenty one Vikings, you said? Is that Arizona? Last week? No. The Arizona. No, <laughs> I guess I don't have it. <laughs> No. Yeah. That's unbelievable. I must have written it in a different notebook that is not here right now. I might have been. I might have picked that for the Jets game because I thought it was going to be close. And it was pretty. It was pretty close. For it was yes, and that was part. yeah. That was not in in inaccurate assessment of of how that game was going to go. Yeah, hey, it, and the, the Saints no have not played against the Vikings since they signed Aldrick Robinson, who is a touchdown machine. Touchdown machine. That's all he does. They have, have three catches for three touchdowns. It's amazing. And I still he look at that, him like, and I'm little, like, yeah, Jerry know, what, Robinson. What, what his little like celebration is where he's like winding or he's riding a bike. Or, I don't even know what he's doing. It's so great, though. I love it. Vikings have some of the most random celebrations this year. They are, you know, over the last five years, they're top notch. Top notch celebration. I don't know if this year's are top notch. Top the, notch. The, the dead arm, arm dance. The, the dead arm dance is to me. Here's my hot, hot take dead, of the year. Dead arm dead. dance better than duck duck gray duck. Wow, dead arm dance, with or without the uh, the little like dead arm dance with the mama. Uh, mama. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is called either. But that those two together. That did you to did you the see the dance. was it Kirk Cousins that was wired? During the game, and it was in that game, and they and he oh, went, no. Thielen went over him and, and asked him, or was talking about the dead arm dance, and and he was like, oh, those, those hips are pretty stiff, and Cousins like, yeah, these hips are pretty stiff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. dude, I'm a huge fan of the dead arm dance. I'm a huge fan of just uh, celebration. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't do it again. I know. Just, you, Cousins did the, the pregame speech again. That's three games in a row, and that's three wins. So I'm pretty sure he's going to have to do that again on Sunday. Mm-hmm. I think that he says, men, I've never yeah. been able Like, I would I'm never back. be like, able to. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Everyone's like, yes. Because I know it's going to be so cheesy. <laughs> oh, you know, he is just like, a, like Tony he is... Robbins. Just listen to like a Tony <laughs> Robbins podcast. <laughs> he is like the, like quintessential like sweater wearing cheese, cheese ball <laughs> like, like the he's the kind of guy who commercials. yeah he's the kind of guy who goes on a vacation and wears the hat with like the flap all the way down the back you know the, while he's uh the sunglasses oh with the sunglasses with the straps on yes <laughs> <laughs> well have you seen those, what is those guy code commercials where they're like don't don't be like your dad Oh, don't turn into insurance. You. <laughs> and the guys in the club, and he's like, "Can we get some of those jalapeno poppers?" <laughs> so good. That's totally Kirk. Cousins. Yes, it is. Oh my God, what's my he favorite can, restaurant? Can, uh, Olive Garden. He, yeah, he can. Love he can sing though. What Kirk you know Cousins can sing? He can sing. Really? There was a. He did like a. He does like a podcast every week. It's really random. What? But he had, yeah, he had, yeah, he does a podcast. He's trying to Shut take away. He's up. trying to take our uh, yeah our mojo. Cool. So you want he's like a, he's he's a competitor now. Eighty some uh, million dollars guaranteed, <laughs> and you want to take some of my piece of the podcast had, pie? Yeah, he had Thielen on last week, and uh, and Tom Compton, and like him and Tom Compton are like old friends, or like roommates, or whatever. When they were the Redskins, yeah, yeah. And apparently, like Compton came down to like Nashville or whatever to because cousin's friend is. Ever, like he works in a studio mm. down there and they just were recording some stuff just like for fun they he recorded like first date from Blake 182 oh and, my god and, and like, they played up, him singing these songs shut up and dance it sounded like that shut up and dance song and he sounded good Ow. but then I was like I was like how much is this uh 
enhanced. Yeah, where's your... Uh, <laughs> how much auto-tune are we talking yeah, here? Yeah, but he sounded good. I'll have to send you the clip. It sounded pretty good. And yeah, dude, like, you should send that. And it also... This guy can do. Totally. And would not shock me because he's like, well, yeah, I could kind of sing. I've been in choir for years. Because of course yeah. you have, Kirk Cousins. Because of course you have. You wear your wet, you, yeah, you wear your wedding ring while you're playing football. Of course you've been in a choir for years. You a lot of guys do that. I see that white like, guy, Andy Dalton, Ryan Fitzpatrick. It's bonkers to me because isn't that super dangerous? Can't you get your like finger ripped no, off doing have, stuff like they wear, that? Rubber, they wear rubber rings. Oh, really? Yeah, or silicone or whatever. Oh, okay, so, so it doesn't destroy just their like, hand when something. Just so they know to let the cheerleaders on the field. Yeah, you know, ladies, I'm taking. Um, Take it. I just that kind of. You can't take me, you know, with your underpaid salary out to dinner. So for real, keep it yourself. <laughs> Appreciate if you didn't look at me, but if you were looking, you would notice that I'm pointing at my wedding thing, wedding ring, which is still on my finger while I'm playing. Yeah, can't. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I'd wear my ring while I was playing. I don't have a, a ring, but if I did, yeah. I don't know if I would wear it while I was playing football. I just Nowadays, I just, feel, I just feel naked without it, so I'm yeah. just used to it. That makes been sense. on for seven years now. So. Oh, hey, so, by the way, I'm going to get married. Uh, I asked my girlfriend to marry. Oh, shit! Ta-da! Sorry. Sorry for the bleep. <laughs> yeah, but. bleep that out. But yeah, so I'm getting married. It's pretty exciting stuff. I already, I don't know. Nice. It's kind of backwards. I already got two kids, Congrats. so it's like the, you know, whatever. Know. It's good though. It's good. It'll be fun. So It'll your be a very destination good wedding inside the U.S. Bank Stadium? <laughs> you know, I asked her and she said no. So uh, nope, we won't be doing that. That's the Twin Stadium. Thing? I was yeah. just gonna say, also <laughs> will not happen at Target Field nor Target Center. Nor hmm. the uh, soccer stadium, which Anything actually, left? yeah, that's the whole. Oh no, the, the ice, hockey. Ice rink? Yeah, the hockey the, Excel the Energy Center. Oh. That's in St. Paul, though. And no, does I mean, every team have their own arena? Yeah, I think so. Jeez, even um, the even the Gophers. Yep, Gophers have their own football stadium. Well, no, I should say the soccer the. MLS team is sharing the oh, Gopher the Stadium for now. now. Yes, but it's it's almost done. Like it's it's in the finishing the stages. <laughs> I, you know, it's there. It's Twin Cities, so there's a lot of room in between. So we fit them in. But no, most of them are downtown. Honestly, uh, the Twin Stadium, Timberwolves Stadium, U.S. Bank is all downtown Minneapolis, oh. and then the Gophers is where the college area is and then the uh soccer stadium is in st paul in an area called midway and there's a lot of room there they basically just knocked down a terrible strip mall and put a stadium up instead i deliver cigarettes over there yep it's pretty exciting stuff all right adam you know, a lot of topics. We did. Usual. Yeah, it is. And I'm sorry about that again. Um, you know, I'm changing my pick. Going to go 28-27 Vikings. Whoa, same score. Uh, well, okay. 21-20. Scratch it. We're going to go 24-14 Vikings. Oh, shit. It's been a while. Wow. It's been a while. but Blow out. 24-14. Because I feel like Holton Hill, yeah, with a caveat, with an asterisk, Rasterix. Yep. Picks. 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 for Pick six for Holton Hill. Holton Hill. Hot take prediction. He probably isn't going to play because everybody's going to be healthy. And that's going to be stupid. But uh, that's my pick, and I'm sticking with it, Adam. Would you. Oh, one last question. Would you rather. Would you be worried if Sendejo didn't play? Or would you be more worried if he did play? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, I might be more worried if he does play. Because I, I haven't, not once since he's been gone, have I been like, oh, Iloka, he got behind you, or Iloka missed a tackle. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, there's, there could be times where he's messed up, but yes. it hasn't been like super obvious. Exactly right. He hasn't got a flag for trying to rip someone's head off. That's the thing right there, is I trust Iloka to not make a penalty. and sc- He can hit hard, but he doesn't. But legal. Like, yeah. Kind of Sin- like Harrison Smith. Sandejo cannot do that. He is incapable of making a legal tackle now that they've changed the rules. <laughs> He's just incapable. Oh. I don't that'll know. Be some, that'll be something to pay attention to. It will. And it'll be also interesting to pay attention to. I want to see them. If Sandejo plays, I want to see the, like, three safety. No, I think I look at what will play, definitely, 
if Sandejo comes back because I think he's earned that. Yeah, definitely. Especially you know with Mike Hughes being out, they need more help in the secondary. It just makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. So I I would look forward to that if Sandejo can play. Uh, but that's I would such definitely. A, that's be such worried. a good pickup. They got him for the vet minimum. Yes. And then didn't play him for like five weeks, four weeks. And whatever. that Tom that Tom Johnson signing was so good. Man, was he awesome! Stole and from also, the uh, 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 Perry, Perry Perry looked great yesterday yeah, he too. Did look good. So they're just man. Stephen I'm, Weatherly is looking good. I'm into it. Daniel Hunter is an absolute stud. Yeah, if Griffin comes back, do they keep Hunter on the right side. I think so. And then here's what I uh, heard on the radio today for a hot minute was when Griffin comes back, have him do the stand-up B-Rob role. I did hear that, too. last year. That kind of blew my mind. That would be terrifying from (laughs) if I would not want to play offense against that. And that uh, is a good thing for me. Because guards don't want any, any of that. Dude, could you imagine having and then and then you bring all those guys into the A gap and that's the like group you're looking at trying to figure out who to block? Good luck. Yep. Well, all right, all buddy. Right. Four, uh, four straight. Four straight. Here we go. go. Skull Vikes. I will. Uh, we will be having the. Oh no, it's a Sunday night game. Do you still want to do the post game thing? I was unavailable last week, and I apologize. It'll be 8 o'clock for me, so I can do it. Oh, yeah, you won't care. It'll be late for me next. We'll do it. Oh, shit. Bleep it. We'll do it live. (laughs) Even uh, if it's for like 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll get together. We'll discuss it. Either celebrate or cry. I'd probably cry. Probably both. Yeah, maybe. (laughs) All right, bud. Skull Mike. See you next Thursday. See you Sunday.